Okay, and we'll record it. Go ahead, okay. How would you want to be remembered as a lawyer and as a person? Uh, that's not important to me. When I was a kid, he told me he didn't do anything special during the war, and I believed him. Only as I got older did I realize that he had participated in the D-Day invasion and the Southern France invasion and the Okinawa invasion. The Great Depression hit when he was six. War came when he was uh, 19 and then graduated from law school, took a job at the Treasury Department, rose to become chief counsel of the controller of the currency pretty quickly, then moved over to Maine Treasury and rose through the ranks there very quickly and just did well at everything he did. And then business consulting firm until he was 73, and by the time he was 73, he was a track star. I started running around my basement, which was fairly large, and I could not do a quarter of a mile. But I kept at it, and eventually there was a meet at Georgetown University. And I thought, well, that's close by, I'll try it. At that time, I didn't try to do distances. I did the 400 meter and the 800 meters, and I won a gold medal and a silver medal. And I thought, this is fine. So that's how I got started, and I started competing. To me, he's a hero. Um, it's a word he would not like to hear at all, but to me, he's a hero. He's modest in word and deed. He did have the line about don't read your press clippings, which was repeated many times through through, through my childhood. But uh, in my judgment, the single most important life lesson he's passed on to his children is, is just be kind to other people and be kind without regard to their uh, station or rank or anything else. Just be kind to everyone you come in contact with. I've led a very fortunate life. 